Hello, my name is Giuliano Maloney. I'm the EMIMC product manager here at ANSYS. And today I'm going to present the EMIMC workflows in HFSS presentation as part of the HFSS track in the solutions theater. I'd like to start this presentation showing some information with respect to the EMC lab test cost. Um, for testing a prototype, a physical prototype, it's usually expensive. You need, of course, the product so you can run several tests on it. There are some pre-compliance tests that you can perform in-house. So if you have to change something on your design, usually you have to redesign your print circuit boards, you're going to need a new prototype, you have to assemble all the components, you have to redo all the tests, that takes some time and the cost could go up to tens of thousands of dollars. If you need a radiated emission test, for example, you might need a same anechoic or anechoic chamber and you need some of your staff to go over there and perform those tests or you can of course hire third-party companies to do that but if you need to change uh, the product at that stage including uh, all the costs regarding the tests and the man hours involved it you know it could go up to hundreds of dollars hundreds of thousands of dollars and of course if you have a full platform like a vehicle an airplane and you go for example for a radiated immunity test as we're seeing here on the right side or even a lightning strike on an aircraft and you have to change something on your prototype you know if you sum up all of the cost it could go up to millions of dollars just like in the lab, we do have some challenges on EMI EMC simulations. Um, here we have an example on the left side uh, of a real EMC test. It's a bulk current injection test. And on the right side, we have pretty much the same test, but now in a virtual environment in HFSS, we run the same test, but now virtually. So you don't need a physical prototype. You need only information in your design and of course information on the environment, such as the BCI probe, the length of the cables, listens, and so on. Uh, most of these details, they are described on the standards. So we do have in HFSS uh, some 3D components and workflows that helps our users to set up these kind of tests. And of course, uh, since we're talking about electromagnetic interference, that's the sum of signal integrity, power integrity, PCB, RF, antennas, uh, cables, housing, connectors. So that makes uh, the simulation process more complex and that's one of the biggest challenges that we have in electromagnetic simulations for EMIMC. But I'm going to show some technologies in HFSS that helps our users to overcome all of these challenges. Here we have an example of a laptop computer. And as you can see here, we have mechanical CAD, we have electrical CAD, we have an antennas. And the first challenge that we have is how can we integrate all these information since usually they come from different sources. We have a very nice platform in HFSS called HFSS 3D Layout, where we can import both mechanical CADs, electrical CADs, and also we have a really, really good way to handle all this information. If you take a look at the print circuit board, that's a complex geometry. And if you try to rotate, you know, perform some operations in those type of the geometries, that could be really tricky. And we do have some really good technology knowledge in HFSS 3D layout to handle all of that. The second challenge that we have is, of course, how can we mesh a complex geometry like this? HFSS, in order to solve Maxwell's equations, we have to mesh the geometry. And in HFSS, we do have very good meshing technology. Of course, the cornerstone of HFSS, it begins and ends with the automatic adaptive mesh and refinement. So every HFSS simulation, it's really, really accurate. We can see here on the left side, the adapted mesh for this print circuit board and the mechanical CAD only uh, on the down part of this uh, laptop, but you can see that the mesh is not uniform. HFSS refines the mesh to get a better accuracy, not only for the geometry, to represent the geometry, but also to really represent the electromagnetic field behavior. We also have dynamic surface resolution operations for complex CAD geometry. So if you have curvilinear, spherical uh, 
geometries. We apply dynamic surface uh, resolutions to each part of the geometry, which speeds up and enables a very, very good mesh. And we have a flex meshing algorithm that is really good for extremely complex uh, structures, just like the one we are seeing here. But we can use electromagnetic simulations in all of the stage during the development of any given product. And of course there are benefits and some of the simulations require more effort. So when you are designing your product, you, know, you have to improve your design using simulations. That's the best time to use simulation because simulation doesn't require too much information at that stage and you can get a lot of benefits. That's the, the left part of the curve. So for example, we have here a back drilling via animation, uh, but we can optimize transitions. We can optimize PCB layout. We can optimize many things in your design that's going to solve signal integrity problems power integrity problems and also EMI problems. And then of course you can simulate your full product. In this example we're still talking about the same handheld computer. If you simulate a full product you can see more output I would say for the electromagnetic simulation. You can see interference between uh, antennas and uh, digital signals, the sensing, you can see crosstalk, radiated emissions from your product and you have some uh, benefits by doing that because you are using uh, electromagnetic simulations to simulate your whole product. So radiated emissions, for example, is another thing that you can get as an output for that. But then in the end, what most uh, you know users would want is a virtual compliance. Is my computer again is going to pass or fail a given given FCC, IC, ISO, or CISPR standard? So we can do that, of course, uh, but then you're going to need uh, way more information, especially if you take a look in here, we have a same anechoic chamber, we have an antenna, so we're going to need antenna factor, we have turntables. So if you do your design really well, improving your design here on the left side, and you can perform your full product simulation, you will likely won't have any problems during a compliance test. But we do have technologies and workflows that helps our users uh, to go through all these stages. So let's talk about the first stage that will be improving the design itself. Here we have uh, some animations uh, that shows some of the things that we can do with HFSS. On the left side we have a back drilling via. That's a process where we back drill the via to remove the stub. So in this particular case we can see here the electric field and the back drilling via. And as we perform the back drilling we will see that we have a much better improvement both on the TDR and insertion loss. And of of course on the eye diagram. So we can use HFSS to evaluate all of that including manufacturing tolerances. On the right side we have a 10 gigabits uh, signal that goes from that uh, package on the bond wire goes to the PCB and VS. And as you can see here we're running a design of experiment. We're changing now the radius of a via, but we can change the radius of the bond wire, we can change the layout of a given net like what we are seeing here now with the variable con called D1 that controls uh, that net and we can evaluate the best design so we can have a much wider uh, open eye for this signal. Another improvement that can be made is an example for a book current injection. We have a 12 volts DC that comes from that red cable on the right and we should have ideally 12 volts DC on that uh, component called U1. But that's not happening in reality and in this book current injection test we're injecting a 300 megahertz continuous wave in here. So usually we do uh, in this particular case we add capacitors to try to filter that noise and we can see here on the right side if we change the position in this particular case of capacitor 1 how the noise that is going to be generated or injected by that BCI probe is suppressed and reaches the U1 component. We have in blue the 12 volt DC flat that it's uh, on the other end of the cable and you can see here that we can change both the values and the position of this capacitor and we can see how much of that noise can be suppressed. And HFSS leverages uh, high performance computer technology so all of these variations they can be solved in parallel and they're really really fast. We can end up with uh, 
design of experiment uh, respawn surface just like what we see here on, on the right side so we can change the capacitor one position both on y and x axis and we can see the best values for both capacitors c1 and c2 uh, that will suppress that noise and now let's talk about the full product simulation we're still talking about that laptop and of course after you can improve uh, vias back drilling vias the length um, the width of the vias uh, we can simulate the whole product and we can see uh, really good benefits by doing that you can see radiated emissions from example from your device under test you can perform some radio RFII simulations, you can see crosstalk, you can see, uh, you know, if you have some digital signals, desensing the radius uh, of antennas uh, that you have in your uh, product. And of course, you can get a complete signal integrity and power integrity picture of your entire product. We have a very good example from our uh, friends at Smart Modules. This is a, a full product simulation where we have again um, electro CAD and mechanical CAD. So we have connectors, a print circuit boards. And once you have optimized in your design, you can run a full product simulation and then you can still, uh, you know, change some of the routings, you can change the scale back up you can you know uh, change the design of planes and you can improve a lot uh, your signal integrity and also EMI performance in this particular case in here we have two eye diagrams the original design uh, revision a you can see the eye diagram even though it's not overlapping the green mask it, it, you know it's a little closed so after improving your design a little bit you can see now that the eye is much open now is on revision B and that's one of the good things that you can do with simulation you can not only you know see if your design uh, will attend a given eye mask or a specific standard but you can also improve that because there are several uh, manufacturing tolerances and another uh, tolerance that you need to account for in here so if you optimize your design even better you likely have less problem in the field and of course uh, what most of our customers are looking for is virtual compliance they want to know if your product is going to fail or pass any given standard and for that uh, as we're showing if you improve your design we will likely have no surprises and no issues during the compliance test but then uh, we do have in HFSS several technologies that helps our users to simulate that so in this particular case we have a uh, a uh, Cisper 22 uh, setup here with a semi honeycoic chamber antennas and we have again our laptop that we are using as an example and we do have in HFSS really good technologies that uh, provide us a very good in streamlined workflow to simulate those kind of problems we have 3D components for example, for entire chambers, we have 3D components for electrostatic discharge, radiated emissions, book current injections, all of that. It comes with HFSS installed and they follow uh, some of the standards. And of course, we do have some technology that I'm going to highlight in some slides that helps uh, to solve those electrically large problems. In this particular case, we have the laptop now in a turntable and as you can see in here we have uh, you know an anechoic chamber with absorbing elements the antennas so we are using the antenna factor in here of course uh, there are some uh, simplifications or assumptions that we can do in uh, HFSS where we don't actually need to simulate the absorber elements, for example, not even the antenna. We can calculate electric field anywhere in space, even outside the simulation domain. But uh, if you want to exact follow the standards and get some uh, really close results compared to what you're doing in the lab, then we do provide those um, 3D components for specific standards here in HFSS. For example, we have book current injection, not only the bench, the test bench model, but we also have some BCI probes as an example, as 3D components. We have radiated emissions according to CISPR 25, just as well as conducted emissions test bench models. We have electrostatic discharge uh, models. And since we're talking about EMIMC and all the complexity, we need some really good technology. And HFSS provides exclusively technology that helps our users to solve extremely complex EMIMC models. 
here we have an example of a radiated immunity test from uh, one of our partners. It is published on Antis Advantage. So you see here an antenna that is generating noise and you have to first measure uh, electric field inside your vehicle and then you have to make sure all the electronics components will behave as expected. In this particular case in here on the left side we are simulating the full chamber and the antenna. But we can use some hybrid technology like Phoebe finite element boundary integral where we can eliminate all the air volume uh, around the antenna and the vehicle. So what we see here on the right side on the top is a horn antenna where we have the simulation domain around that antenna and then we have the chassis of the car and again uh, we have a, an air box, a conformal air box around that chassis and there is no air between those uh, two separated domains but they are fully coupled through the method of moment. So the finite element boundary integral is something that is widely used for to simulate those electric large models. On the bottom we can see here uh, we have uh, a dipole antennas and we have really conformal air box around the radiating elements and we have again the car, the vehicle in this case rotating and all of that can uh, be simulated in parallel, all the rotations. So if we leverage HPC, uh, high performance computing, we can get really, really fast simulations using full wave technology in HFSS. If we need to simulate models that are extremely electrically large, uh, which means that they are big in a physical size and we need to simulate that at a very, very high frequency. We need to move from full wave to asymptotic techniques like this shooting bouncing rate plus. The greatest advantage of HFSS is that we can leverage shooting bounce rate technology, but we do have advanced physics models such as creeping waves, UTD and PTD that improves the results and the accuracy of shooting bounce and rays. So the results can get closer to what you would expect in real life and also of course close to full wave simulation results. Here in this particular case we have on the top right side how the shooting bounce and ray works. So we have antennas and we shoot rays from that antennas and every time that ray uh, hits a surface we calculate the current and the ray bounces again to another surface where we again calculate the current. So using this technology we can see that we can simulate RF cosine examples for antennas in airplane, all the antennas in an airplane. Here again we're leveraging shooting bounce and ray plus technology to simulate this entire environment. It's an industrial facility and we have here a worker with a Wi-Fi receiver and we have a microwave heater that is causing and generating some noise. So every time that this work gets closer to the microwave heater you can see on the left side on the constellation diagram we are using a 64 QAM modulation uh, the symbols, the scrambles. That's because of the interference generated by the microwave heater. We can also see on the interference matrix that we have uh, interference between the microwave heater and the phone. And if you click on that, you see the EMI margin that we have uh, at any given distance uh, from that uh, source, noise source, which is the microwave heater. We also have encrypted 3D components technology in HFSS, which means that uh, any provider can give you a component for a capacitor, a connector, and an antenna, and they can protect their IP. So here on the left side, we have an HDMI connector, and we see the encrypted HDMI connector. So you can actually place that connector on your print circuit board, but you can't actually see what's inside. Since HFSS leverages automatic adaptive mesh refinement technology, we don't need to know what's inside of that connector, but HFSS generates a very accurate mesh. That's a good way for an integration between different uh, suppliers and OEMs, integrators, to create full models and get a full picture. One EMI example that we can see here on the right side is a coupling between a differential clock and a, an antenna and a NAT that connects to the chip. Um, if we don't consider the 3D component itself, we would consider only the coupling between the traces. But it's also important to account for the coupling between the traces and also the antenna. So we can see uh, on, on the right side when the, that differential clock's on or off the Wi-Fi spectrum. So we can even see the channel that's interfering 
in, in that particular case. We also have in HFSS an advanced cable modeling solution. So when we are thinking about cables, you know, a car they have, uh, you know, dozens of miles of cables. And if you take a look at the cross section of the cables, we have hundreds, maybe thousands of conductors in there. And if we try to simulate that using the rigorous finite element method, um, you know, thousands of cables, that's something that's not practical. So in HFSS, we have a very good workflow where we solve the cross section of cables using a transmission line solver, and then we map the fields uh, on the bundles in HFSS. So here on the right side, you see several wiring harness bundles. Those are red tubes, those red cylinders, and you can see the electric field around them generated by specific signals within that bundle. So we can simulate full vehicles uh, in HFSS considering hundreds of conductors. And we also talk about the mix between RF, signal integrity, and also EMI. As we were talking about, uh, EMI is always a combination of most of the electromagnetic coupling that we have in any given product. So in this particular example, we have a generic cell phone where we have two antennas, a Bluetooth antenna and a GSM antenna. And in this case, we have a package in the middle of the PCB and we have a signal that goes from that package to the USB connector on the right side of this phone. As you can see in the middle of the screen, we have an eye diagram that shows that the eye is open and the Bluetooth and GSM antennas are off. As we turn on the antenna, we can run the same signal integrity analysis, but now you can see that there's a violation in the eye mask. And that's basically because of the interference from the antennas into that uh, particular signal. So those are the type of simulations that requires both RF and signal integrity background. And in the end, it's an electromagnetic interference analysis. Now we have 5G. So with 5G, we have, instead of a single antenna, we have an antenna array. Uh, in this particular example, we are using, again, a generic cell phone and a much bigger array that you would find in a cell phone. Uh, you can find those uh, arrays. This is an 8x8 array working at a 28 gigahertz that could work on, uh, could be placed on servers and big electronics. On cell phones, we actually have smaller arrays, but we created this mock-up just to show how can we run a 5G millimeter wave array antenna affecting digital signals in your print circuit board. So not only we have the array, but if you take a look at the print circuit board, we have a controller and a DDR4. And we have several nets uh, that are connecting this memory module to the controller. And we will be evaluating a, a single signal in here just for the sake of clarity uh, in this net uh, called DQ7. One thing that uh, we have uh, on antenna arrays is that if we change the magnitude and phase of each antenna, we change the radiation pattern. So what we see here, uh, on the eye diagram is the DQ7 uh, DDR4 signal. As you can see, as the antenna ray, you know, is focusing the radiation towards the sky, there's no interference on the eye diagram. But if we change that eye diagram, so the radiation now is focusing towards uh, somehow the print circuit board, you can see the eye diagram now it's really close. So this is a new electromagnetic interference now that comes with 5G. So now that we have antenna rays, we need to make sure that many, uh, you know, depending on the excitation of your antenna ray, that your electronics are going to perform as expected. So the, the great advantage of using HFSS is that we can simulate finite arrays, we can include IBS models, and we can run this type of simulation that combines finite arrays, signal integrity, everything in a full system. And with that, uh, I'd like to conclude my presentation just highlighting again some workflows that we had to integrate mechanical CAD and electro CAD in HFSS 3D layout. It's a really powerful environment where we can merge electro CAD, mechanical CAD, and simulate your whole product. We also offer uh, EMIMC 3D components, templates, workflows for especially uh, full system uh, virtual compliance and cable modeling techniques to model several conductors uh, in a platform. The meshing algorithm that we have in HFSS 
it's automatic and it adapts as needed so we always have the right answer with HFSS and now during the last years we haven't uh, improved the algorithm by adding some dynamic surface resolution operations to handle complex CAD as well as flexible meshing algorithm for those complex assemblies and of course in HFSS we have not only finite element methods in time domain and frequency domain but we also saw how can we leverage Phoebe finite element bounds integral and also the hybridization with a shooting bounce rate to simulate electric large structures just in the case of, of antennas uh, close to airplanes and uh, automobiles and of course we can use high performance computing to get those answers really really fast with that I would like to thank you uh, for your time and please enjoy the rest of the conference thank you <laughs>